product throughout the system. Alongside this, refrigeration is of the utmost importance by retaining product quality. This also requires heat to be removed from certain areas of the machine. Uh, two problems are therefore combined into a single solution. The removal of heat from some areas and requirements for increased heat in others. Conducting panels draw heat using the principles of convection regulated by the boiler and sending freezing air along one set of pipes in one direction and superheated vapors in another. Isn't it dangerous allowing this filthy discharge to collect so close to the core? We can use the flow to drive the turbines. There will always be a torrent of excreta flooding through these tunnels. We can use this to supplement the steam production and ensure constancy. Dear God, the stench! This fecal matter is the true product of the age. Lewis. Several of the older forms have reached their containment area and escaped into the sewers. They remind me of my limitations. This is no Kelm and I, and no, no Eliyahu? At least, not quite yet. It is the heat generated from keeping the doorway between open that is to blame. You cannot simply pack them about with coolant as we do at center where the doorway is. The later versions are kept safe by freezing the temperature of those towers. Up here, where the air is hot and embedded, they become overheated. And their duality tears them asunder. As the other place flies from their cells, their vita splinters, they live sporadically torn one world to the other and back again in violent unpredictable bursts for a few seconds they are creatures of this world then they are torn away and cease to have a physical form this vicious ripping back and forth between worlds has driven them quite insane i've ordered the affected areas sealed and will not allow my loyal workers to enter these are damned places now the abode of failed experiments ghosts of fear and spite
Turned around. But we can save them. We can set them free. We can replace a rotten old world with a clean new one. Mr. Davenis, you sound every bit the fanatic. Well, how can I be otherwise, Professor? How can any man of ethics simply stand by and watch this world drown in its own excrement? And your engineer. This visionary with whom you were embarked upon this course, does he share your views? Indeed he does. Indeed he does. The poor fellow has seen it all before. Now, this is not the first great civilization he has wept for. And so you set about things immediately upon your return. Naturally, naturally. These things cannot be left to rot upon the tree. And sponsors were remarkably easy to find. I tell you, Professor, a trail of greed brings... I said, look, my darlings, can you see it? And they said, yes, daddy, yes, we see it. A tall, weathered cap of a steep-sided pyramid, so like those of Egypt. Stone falling away from the summit, vines crawling about, interweaving the st stucco serpents that thrive about the steps. Palpable sense of stillness. A weight of forgotten. And this here, this is where the king sat. And this is where the priests lit. This house, this is the house of the dead. And here, where the sun strikes, this is where they threw their hearts. The hearts that were not consumed. So my darlings, they most certainly were not savages. You see, they believed that the sky could fall on their heads. And they truly, truly believed that offering blood was the only way of stopping this from happening. Perhaps, my darling, perhaps were mistaken altogether, or perhaps their tragedy was they could simply not spill blood enough to prevent the sky from falling. Rich men to your door like pigs to truffles.
believe that's a good idea. Shutting the door behind me. There. This will take this one. You seem to have undergone quite a profound conversion in Mexico, Mr. Lambert. You could not have seen it yourself, Andrew.